<laughs> I, you know, I just didn't care about anybody but yourself, you know. But that's the, that's the story of humanity, you know. We don't care about nobody but ourselves. And uh, you're saved and, you know, and uh, we're here in church and, and praise the Lord, that's not, that's not me on the picture. <laughs> I see, I, Larry showed it to me, he says, hey, man, that's, <laughs> but you know what, I'll tell you what, I was more like a chameleon, you know, I would hide among, because, you know, when you live that kind of life, man, it's a, it's a really dangerous life, real dangerous life. Look, I want to minister from, I'm a preacher, been pastoring for not, going on 20 years, My, I'm going to preach from Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, verses 8, you know, let me, let me kind of, Luke chapter 15. And uh, I want to minister uh, on um, how precious people are to God. And uh, because, you know, I'll tell you what, as a church, we can never forget how precious uh, people are to the Lord and stuff. If, if the church forgets, if the church forgets um, how precious people are, I mean, we've lost the whole, the whole, uh, purpose of, of why God saves us, you know, why God saves us. You know, the, the beautiful thing about church is that when I got saved and I walked into church and, um, and I walked in, uh, this is a true story, I walked into church and I walked in uh, with, a, with a syringe in my sock. I used to carry my own, I used to carry my own, uh, you know, they call it the rig, you know, your own thing. And I'd carry, and I had heroin in, in my sock, and, and I was, you know, looking for the bathroom, looking for the bathroom so I could slam and, and then, you know, continue, because I'm trying to change, but I don't know how. I'm trying to change. So a lot of times people walk into church, and you don't know, you, you don't know re really what's going on in their lives. You don't know. And so I walked into church, and it, it, I tell you what, these people just blew my mind away, man. They blew my mind away because... They showed interest in me. They showed, they really showed interest in me. They didn't just walk into church and then come and hear the preacher preacher preach and then go home. What most of America does today is hear the preacher preach and go home. And that's what I do. And that's not what you want to do. You don't just want to hear the preacher preach and go home. Because if all you do is hear the preacher preach and go home, you know, the world will never change. Your city will always remain the same. But I praise God that people got saved and, you know, they, 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 they came and they came up to me and they said, hey, Jesse, uh, no, they said, hey, uh, what's your name? My name is so-and-so. And they introduced themselves and, and I was like, you know, hey, you know, we're glad you came to church. Uh, you know, why don't you come back? Come back to church. So that really did something to me. It, it, it kind of, it did something to me. It did something to me, something that I felt that I've never felt really in the world. In the world, everything's nothing but, it's, 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 there's a lot of uh, a phoniness in the world. How many would agree? There's a lot of phoniness. It's not real, man. It's not real. It's, it's just a front. It's just a front. It's an image. Like, you know, you see the tattoo craze? That's a front. You know, people trying to project something that they're really not. I mean, a matter of fact, the reason the tattoo makes me laugh is because I have no tattoos. <laughs> I have no tattoos. Because in my neighborhood, I mean, you know, I says, you know, you put tattoos, you're a marked man. You're a marked man, man. The other gang will see you, man. They'll mark you. The cops will see you. You're marked. I says, I don't want nobody to know. And, you know, just no tattoos. That was the way I, I kind of seen things. But I got saved and I gave my life to God. And there was people in the church that really touched my life and helped me. So let me begin here. I want to preach on how precious souls are to, to the Lord. But not only to the Lord, but to the church. To the church. Or suppose a woman has ten silver coins... And she loses one. Does she not light a lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and her neighbors together 
and she says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you that there is rejoicing in the presence, presence of angels of God over one sinner that repents. Here you have a story. Let me kind of, you know, summarize it a little bit. You have uh, uh, Jesus Christ, is, uh, uh, he's eating with sinners. He's eating, he's eating with sinners, and, they're, and the Pharisees are, uh, uh, you know, they're uh, complaining and uh, sort of saying, you know what, why is Jesus uh, eating with sinners? If he was a real Jew, why is he associating with sinners? And the Bible says that he says that uh, he, he came and he says, hey, uh, what shepherd having a uh, hundred sheep, if he loses one sheep, doesn't he leave the 99 and go after the one? These are three parables back to back. And G what Jesus is saying, look, man, I'm going to put a stop to this. This is over. Three parables back to back. Uh, 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 a sheep uh, that was lost. Uh, a coin uh, uh, that was lost. Uh, a son that was lost. That souls are precious to God. That people are precious to the Lord. What I've read in, in, in all this is, you know, you think about what is, the, what is the metaphor of the shepherd? The shepherd is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ left heaven. He left heaven and he came to this, to this uh, uh, he died on the cross and he came and he left uh, the 99 and he went after the lost. He went after us. If it wasn't for what Jesus Christ uh, did on the cross, you and I would be still with, without, uh, helplessly without God, unable to be saved. And then he said, there's a father that had two sons. And one, one son says, dad, I'm not happy in church no more. One son said, you know what, man, uh, I, I'm not, dad, I, I don't like church no more. I don't want to be under your covering no more. I want to do whatever I want. That's like a backslider. How many times do we see backsliders or people that are saved and maybe you're in church and you're saved and you love God, but you have to be careful because, uh, uh, you know, the time's going to come uh, where you're really going to have to make that decision. You know what, man, I want to serve God regardless of what happens. And one, said, one son said, you know what, Father, I don't want to be under you no more. And he left. It breaks my heart to see somebody leave God. How many would agree? It breaks my heart, man, as much as I want to chase after them, as much as I want to, uh, you know, see them come, to, uh, come back, man. Sometimes there's nothing we can do, man. They're in the hands of God. And the father waits and the Bible says that that son left. And one day, the Bible says that that son was eating uh, uh, from the trough of pigs. And, and he came to his senses, the Bible says. And he says, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Okay, we understand that. We have Jesus Christ, the shepherd. We understand we have uh, uh, the Father in heaven that loves us. But who is this woman in this parable? Or suppose a woman. Who is this woman? That's the church. And that's what I want to minister on this morning. The church. God gave me a love for the church. This was crazy. From someone that was never raised up in church. From no one that had no upbringing uh, uh, in Christianity whatsoever. Uh, God gave me a love for the church. A love. A love for, for the things of God. The Bible says that this woman, she lost something very precious. The Bible says here that she had ten silver coins and she loses one. The Bible says, does she not light up the lamp and sweep the house and search carefully until she finds that lost coin? See, when you think about how precious people are, it's the silver coin. You know, you would think, well, God, why, why didn't you use a, a, a gold coin? Coin seems to be more valuable than, than gold. Not in this time. In this part of, of the history of, 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 of the Bible, silver was more precious than gold. Silver was more precious. That's why the Lord uh, is using the analogy of silver, a precious metal, something that, something that has a, an intrinsic value. 
that word intrinsic mean that it, it, it holds its value from within. You cannot steal, rob the value. It can never lose its value. It's intrinsic. You know how you and I, we look at people and we judge people? You know people can never lose their value? You know a human being can never lose its value? I walked into church and I have all these people, and there I am, and I walk into church. I'm going to tell you something. My wife said that when I walked into church, I looked so scary that she wasn't scared, she was even scared of me. when I, She wouldn't even come up to me because I was, I was all messed up. But I praise God that there was a church there, they, a man that embraced me, that loved me, that accepted me as I was because they seen that this value in me that I didn't even see myself. I didn't even see it. I didn't see that value in me anymore. See, in this coin, we have a, a, double, a double meaning that the human soul is precious in the sight of God. But not only is the, is the human soul precious in the sight of God, but it is distinguished from all other creation, amen, that, that there is a divine imprint in every human being. The Bible says that, that, uh, that God created man in his image. There is a divine imprint upon the soul of man. See, here in this parable <clears throat> is a story. is a story about a coin that was missing. And this, this represents, listen to me, a lost soul. A lost soul. You know, I, I was driving your neighborhood, and I'm... I just say, hey, Larry, everything's so separated. You know, nothing but jungle out here. You know, can't run, can't run from the cops, man. The alligators will eat you in there. My neighborhood, you could just run into the backyard and underneath somebody's house, man, and you could make it work. But there's nowhere to run here. <laughs> and I seen uh, the neighborhoods and. I drove by some, and Sister Linda said, that's a good neighborhood right there. I said, yeah, man, I could tell. It's a trailer park, you know. I said, man, that's where it's at right there, man. That's where it's at. See, a soul can never lose that value. A soul, a soul, a, a, a human being can never lose uh, uh, that value. This is why the Lord uses uh, a silver coin. He doesn't use bronze. Bronze. He doesn't use iron or copper. He says silver. It cannot lose its value to God. You guys remember that verse, for God so loved the world? We quote it all the time, don't we? Very religiously. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only son. Amen. That he gave his only son. He gave the very best to go after that soul. Because man does not lose its value. It's intrinsic. It's there. See, we live in a world now that if we're not careful, we can become very calloused. We can become very heartless. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been pastoring for 19, going on 20 years. I've seen some of the most callous people in church. I've seen some of the most mean-spirited people in church, man. I've seen people in church, and I, says, and I always pray, God, I don't want my heart to become like that. I don't be, you know, in our church, we have a, a lot of uh, kids that, that come in and they don't have any fathers, and I don't know who knows where their mothers are at. And they'll come in. My, my heart breaks for those little kids, man. We have, we have people that come into our church, amen, and, you know, my heart just breaks for them, amen. You just feel like hugging each and every one of them. We live in a world, uh, a callous world, uh, a heartless society where people don't value, uh, uh, don't value uh, human beings any longer. See, this is why God, he chose a silver coin. And I want to kind of tell you something about why it's interesting that he would use a silver coin. How many of you here have ever found a, a, a coin that's been sitting in the dirt for who knows how many years 
and you pick it up, and you're trying to look for the date. Anybody here? Yeah. And you're trying to find the date. Like Ever since I was a little kid, I'd find a coin in my backyard, and they say, uh, get baking soda, get lemon, clean it up, and you look for the year, because you, you can't see it. You can't see it anymore. It's hard to see, you know, the image of God in people sometimes. How many would agree? It's hard to see God in people anymore. It's, it's hard, man. You know, people are so messed up. It's hard to see God. That's why he uses a coin because every coin has an image. Every coin, our coins, we have the presidents and we have uh, things that represent the United States. Back then, they had an image of, 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 their, of their emperor. That coin belonged to, the, to, to that emperor. And every time you find a coin and that's been sitting in the dirt, that's been sitting somewhere, and, and for, you know, uh, for some reason, because of time, because of the corrosion, you can't see that image any longer on coins. But that's the whole meaning and purpose of our lives. Remember when you got saved and, and somebody came from the church or someone and they began to, they seen something in you. They seen something in you. They seen something of value that you can see yourself. Why would, why would, you know, I remember the first time when I was in church and they came up to me, man, they swore me. And I said, man, what's up with all these people? I was like up against the wall, you know, like us, we go up against the wall. You know, we hold the wall. I said, well, what's up with all these people? Get away from me. What you want from me? You know? Hey, uh, what's your name? Hey, uh, you know, why don't you come back to church? And God loves you. And God has a plan for your life. And, and me, in the back of my mind, I'm a, I'm a stinking con man. I, I, you know, I'm, a, I'm thinking, man, how I can rob you. I mean, you guys don't believe me, man, but you better watch your pur 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 purses for some of these new converts, man. <laughs> it was crazy. And uh, so they're there, and I'm going, man, what do you want from me? They didn't want nothing from me. That's what drove me crazy. They didn't want nothing from me, man. They didn't want not one thing from me. Maybe you're a visitor here today. I'll tell you what, the pastor, man, he don't want nothing from you. He just wants you, amen, to get saved, amen. He wants you to understand that God loves you. He wants you to understand that you don't have to be lonely anymore. You don't have to be broken, that there's a God in heaven that cares for you, amen. All these people, amen, coming up to me, they seen something in me. And even if they didn't see it, they seen my life. They seen, you know, I was all messed up. I was all messed up. I, you know, I don't even like looking at some of the pictures that I have. See, on each coin, there's a, a super, a ascription. The Bible says that God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, male and female. And sometimes we hear of, of the, these uh, insane crimes, these, the, the, these, the crazy things, amen, these wicked things that are being done. Where is God? Where's the image of God? Where's the image of God uh, in, the, in the hearts of these, of these people? How many of you ever remember saying, oh, I'll never do that? Oh, I'm never going to be like that. Come on, let's be honest. And pretty soon you're doing the things that you said I will never do. You go, what did that happen, man? What happened? What happened? I remember I was a happy kid, man. Happy kid. You know, I had a father and my mother. And my dad loved I mean, the fire out of us. I praise God that my mom and dad got married. They're in church too, also in El Centro. They've been married for going on 50 years. 50 years, man. They stayed together because of God, because of the church. 
And I remember, you know what, my dad loving us and, you know, just caring for us so much. And, and I remember growing up right there in the, in, in, uh, off of North Broadway and Avenue 18 there in East L.A., growing up just a happy kid and living my life. And, you know, a little bit at a time, man, I began to get sucked into the world, man. I began to get sucked into the world, man. I began to get sucked in, and I didn't really realize all the stuff that was going on. But little by little, man, that, uh, that, 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 that world began uh, to, to, you know, suck me into that lifestyle. Next thing I knew, man, I was so strung out on, on cocaine, on heroin. I was so strung out, man, uh, on, on robberies, on all this stuff, man. Uh, you know, by the age of uh, 15, 16, completely strung out on heroin. Just completely. Fixing uh, $300 a day back in the 1983. That's a lot of money. Where does a 15, 16-year-old kid get $300 a day? And you get sucked into this vortex. And let me take the time to say this. You know, kids, be careful, man. Be careful, man. It's, it's not a game. It'll suck you in. It'll suck you in, man. You know that tattoo craze? It'll suck you in, man. You know that, uh, you know, the, the, the marijuana stuff, man? You know what just, you know, it'll suck you in. It'll suck you in. And there I was, and, and, and you know, I just like, man, you know what? What happened to me? What happened to me? Next thing I knew, and, 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 and you know, I was, you know, I don't really like to talk about this, but, you know, I, I, next thing I knew, I'm, I had a really good, supposedly a good friend of mine. And, and I says, you know what, I, you know, you know I got to take care of this guy. You know, when you come from a life of where I come from, it's, you know, you, you got to put people away. And I remember, you know, going and getting that, that thing and having it ready. I said, I'm a, I remember murder entered my heart. That's all I'm going to say. I remember murder entered my heart. And I'm walking with this guy. And I'm leading him to an alley. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow him away. 16 years old. 16. Calloused. Ruthless. And I remember hearing a voice. And that voice says, look at what you've become. Look at what you've become. I remember murdered entered my heart. And I remember saying, how did I ever get to this point? Children are being corrupted at a very young age. Morals are non-existent. The breakdown of the family. Marriage, the sanctity of marriage. You know, you look at the human race, uh, 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 you look at humanity, uh, uh, and every uh, a nation of the world uh, has fallen to a point that, uh, you know what, uh, people are unable to return to God by themselves. Now listen to what I just said. People cannot return to God by themselves. You need to understand this today. Wouldn't it be nice if you had money and, you're, and, 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 when, it, and when, when the money falls out of your pocket that your money would just return back into your pocket? <laughs> How many know if you lose a $100 bill, it's gone? That $100 bill ain't going to look for the owner. That's why the Lord uses a piece of coin. Where it falls... There it lies. Listen to what I'm saying here. Where it falls, there it lies. I can't get that image out of my head. We drove down the neighborhood. Linda says, this is a bad neighborhood here. I seen a couple of guys. I go, man, those look like some thugs out there. You know, you could recognize them right away. <laughs> Takes one to know one, right? <laughs> and I says, man. 
got to get those guys out of those houses, man. You got to bring them into church. Because where it falls, there it lies. Can that sink into your head today? The message of salvation is an awesome story. Oh, we have the great shepherd that left heaven. And he left the 99 to go after the one. You have the father that's waiting for the son. But who's the woman? Who's the woman? It's the church. It's you. It's you. It's you. The other day we had outreach. I said, man, Lord, we want to go different places today. What shall we do? And the Lord gave us a, gave us a good idea. We all went to hit liquor stores. We found, hey, where's all the liquor stores in San Pablo? There's so many of them. We couldn't even hit them all. But where do I go? Where do I go? There's lost souls everywhere. It's good to come to church on Sunday. See, after a, a coin has been in the dirt for such a long time, those of you that have found coins, you know the corrosion. You know the corrosion. You know when you go out there and you find people and people are coming to church, man, they ain't going to be all clean, man. There's going to be a lot of corrosion. I used to be a cusser. Any, any cussers? Don't raise up your hand. <laughs> Anybody still cuss? Don't raise up your hand. I used to be a cusser, man. I used to, you know, I'd just cuss, 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 cuss all the time. <laughs> it was crazy. i cuss out in, there's a lot of uh, uh, Asians in L.A. And I, I wanted to learn all the cuss words in Asian. So I know three languages, Chinese, uh, Mexican, and English, man. Just cuss words. <laughs> you know, corrosion. I came to church, man. I was like, man. But these people in the church, they love me, man. How many want to be part of that? I want to be part of that, man. It is. It's crazy. You know, you look at people like me up there, you go, man, there ain't no hope. There's hope. There's hope, man. There's hope. Sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. It won't affect me. It won't affect me. I can control it. But soon you begin to discover that it controls you. And maybe you're looking at yourself this morning and saying, Look what I become. I'm a mess. See, it's hard to see. Or it's difficult to see the image of God. See, in this, in this analogy, I don't know if you've ever seen it before, it's, 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 it's disturbing. It's, dis it's disturbing. It really, really is, guys. How many of you here have ever lost a large amount of money? It's like, man, it's disturbing. How am I going to pay the rent? Right? How am I going to buy groceries? It's a, this is a disturbing representation of mankind. Something that's valuable to God. Something that's valuable. It, it, you know, uh, a currency uh, it has this intrinsic value. We're able... We're able to, to put a roof over our heads. We're able to put food on the table. You're able to put gas in your car. We're able uh, to give in the offerings. Amen. And preach the gospel. We're able to do many, many things. But it's lost. It's lost. See, this coin, and I hope this can sink into, into our heads this morning. We see the utter helplessness of man. We see the utter helplessness of man when he has lost and the means to restore him back to God.
The other day I said, in my church, I says, if change was easy, we would all change. If change was easy, many of us would not have come to church. Listen to what I'm saying here. If change is easy, everyone would do it. But change is hard. And how many of you would confess that's true? Change is hard. It's hard. That's why a lot of people don't even want to come to church. They don't even want to try. I mean, when I came to church, I remember the preacher says, uh, uh, how many of you want a brand new life? And I says, man, I really want that life, but I don't know if I could. Just like that. I really want the new life, but I don't know if I could. He says, God wants to give you a brand new life. God loves you, and God's going to help you, and he's going to give you a brand new life. Do you want that life? And I remember I lifted up my hand. I said, I want, I want, I'm going to give this a shot. And I'm going to be honest with you. That I came up to the altar, and I was on, I think I was on three years uh, probation, one year state prison suspended. That means that if I violated my probation for whatever reason, I'm headed to prison. That was my situation. And I remember I was up at the altar. And I says, man. There's no way I'm going to make it, man. That was me. That was my mind. There's no way I'm going to make it. There's no way, man. I'm going to violate this probation. I said, there's no way I'm going to make it. The hopelessness that, 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 that I was in. Helpless. Wanting to change. Looking for a way out. I remember my mom I don't really share this story a lot, but I'll share it with you. Because Pastor Larry put me with a whole bunch of tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm about 17 years old. And uh, I get home. I get home and... Um, my, you guys remember the old tubs? The old tubs uh, with the legs? The old tubs? And how many uh, of you brothers who wash your clothes. Remember those old scrubber boards? I, <laughs> you know those scrub boards? Well, my mom used to wash on one of those. And, and I remember she was in the bathroom and she was washing some clothes. I, I, I think she was sitting on her knees. I forget what she was. And I bent over and she had the water on to wash my hands. And when I reach down to wash my hands, I'm stretching them. My mom begins to weep, just to weep. It's hard for me to say this, because it hurts my heart. And she began to weep and to weep. And I look at my mom. I says, why, why are you crying? And she didn't want to say nothing. And she says, it's true. She's seen my tracks. She's seen my It's very difficult. You, you don't know how hard that is, it is for me to, to share this with you. And she began to weep and to weep. And she said, it's true. I, I said, I didn't believe him. I didn't want to believe him. I began to weep, guys. I had, didn't know God, didn't know anybody. So my heart broke for her, you know, because your parents, they love you, man, you know, and helpless. She was helpless. And then my dad gets home from work, uh, and, you know, and my mom tells my dad, and I sit with my dad on the sofa. This is no joke, man. And I forget how my dad asked me. And, he, and my dad began to cry. Just began to cry. Just began to cry. I've never seen my father cry. His young son. He was helpless. I was helpless. Our whole family was helpless, unable to change. That's the utter helplessness and the image that I want to give you and why the Lord uses the coin as a metaphor. Where it falls, there it lies. See, we're saved now. 
I'm saved. I got my wife, my kids. My kids go to university. But do I remember? Or can we remember, you know, that there's people out there? They ain't going to wake up in the morning. We got to call them. You got to go after them. You got to get them ready. He says, hey, look, man, I completely get it. I understand, but I see value in you. But you don't know what they've done to me, right? So there's my dad weeping. And we're searching. I'm a former Catholic, quote, Catholic, Eastern Christmas Catholic. I'm an Ash Wednesday Catholic. <laughs> yeah, walking around that big old cross. Yeah, you know, what's wrong with you? <laughs> I'm a believer. <laughs> and uh, my dad says, you know what? We got to go pray to this idol. This idol will heal you. This is the saint of healing. He says, get on, helpless. My mom driving around the city of L.A. on those, I don't know if you guys are from L.A., the RTD buses looking for methadone clinics. 16. Looking for methadone clinics. And um, looking for healing, power, looking for restoration. Lying in bed, <clears throat> no desire to wake up. Do you know when someone is full of pain, they don't want to wake up? See, we have good lives when we get saved. How many we say, praise God, we have good lives. We have good lives when we're saved. We're blessed. We are, I am blessed. We have good lives, man. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. But what about the coin? What about the woman? Who is this woman? It's the church. That's why I preach. That's why I go for God. When I got saved, I said, man, you know, I said, man, I don't want to be a weak Christian, man. You know, the same way I gave my life to the devil, the same way I served the devil with the same in, uh, intensity, I'm going to serve God. I ain't going to hold back. You know, my father, my father is, you know, he immigrated to the United States in the 1950s. And he is, he gave his life to God, man. I look at my dad, he's 74, 75 now. And man, you know what? He's saved. He reads his Bible. It's crazy, man. It's like, man, my dad, every time he sees me, he's so proud now. You know, man, my son's a pastor. He tells everybody, he says, come on, dad, come down, man. <laughs> come down. My son's a pastor now. We're, we're blessed. And sometimes we can forget. That there's people out there, they're so full of pain, man. They don't want to get up. They don't want to see anybody. They don't want to talk to nobody. When someone's in pain, just like that coin, they're hard to find. You know, when you lose a coin, you can't find it, man. It's buried in dirt. A soul that, that, that is full of pain isolates itself. Someone that's full of depression, they, they, they isolate themselves. They separate themselves. You know, what's going on? That's why at, 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 in the church, brothers and sisters, we've got to be sensitive we got to be sensitive, man. That's why I said earlier, sometimes in church, I found some of the most cruelest people can be Christians in the church. 
How many say, God, we need for the forgiveness of the Lord this morning? We need God to help us today. I don't just want to come to church and look pretty. I look pretty good today. Praise the Lord. <laughs> My wife picked all this out. <laughs> What have I done with my life? The shame, the regret. And what's crazy is the no hope of ever changing. And people just say, you know what, man? It's, it's, it's like, a, it's like, a, it's like a, just that, uh, that, that vicious cycle. The vicious cycle. You know, the Bible says that the devil, amen, the thief cometh not except to steal, to kill, and to destroy that's, what, that's the plan of Satan, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. People don't want to be found, man. I didn't want nobody to know about my situation. It was disgraceful. It was shameful. Where did I go wrong? And that was a thought that haunted me day after day, night after night. And you know what's crazy? Listen to me, some of you youngsters. It all started out as a game. I just want to have fun. I just wanted to party. And I never knew it would end up like this. But praise and glory be to God. You know, I love this verse, Romans chapter 5, verse 6. I love this verse for some reason. Because it reminds me of me. I don't know if you posted Romans 5, 6. You, you got it up here? I lo- read that part. When we were utterly helpless. How many can relate to this? When we were utterly helpless. Christ came at the right time. Can we give the Lord a clap offering right now for a second? <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Let's give him praise. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise. Utterly helpless with no way of escape. Christ came at the right time and died for us. Amen. Sinners who had no use for him. See, there's a real devil out there. The Bible says the devil is like a roaring lion. First Peter chapter five verse eight. I'm not. You don't have to. For, uh, he's like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. You know the word devour. The word devour means. How many of you have ever ate something? And like after the service today, we're gonna go for the blitz. We're gonna hit. It. <laughs> we're gonna hit it, and we're just gonna eat. And when you when you find something that's so good, it's like you know you're full. But you can keep on eating it. But you're a fool, man. That's the devil, man. He's never satisfied. He can keep on devouring it. The devil's never satisfied. He robs you of your innocence, your purity, your hope, your dreams. Then he kills your spirit and your will to to, to live. I didn't want to fight no more, but the devil's not satisfied just destroying you. He wants to destroy your family. Because that's what he does. See, I felt my life was over, of no value, hopeless. To be honest with you, I was walking around with my head hanging low. Like that. Just like, man. Just like that. You know, I found a verse one time. Maybe you guys have heard it. Where David says, he is the lifter of my head. You know the Lord will lift your head? We don't have to walk around with our heads hanging low no more. David calls him, he is the lifter of my head. And the Lord lifted my head up. He saved me. He found me. He didn't send angels. 
He saved people just like you and me. That's what's crazy. How many of you know about some lost coins out there? How many here like money? <laughs> Almost got you. I didn't say love money, like money. We all like money, man. You know? We don't like to lose it. You know, it's like money. Once you, once you lose money and, 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 you know, have you heard stories of uh, uh, coins or money uh, uh, that, that, that was lost for 80, 90 years and you find it, it doesn't lose its value. But it doesn't do you any good, amen, if it's lost. It's the same thing with the souls, amen. A, a soul away from God is of no value to God. But a coin in your hand is a blessing. How many would say amen? amen? A $20 bill in your hand is a blessing. A soul in the hands of God is a blessing. A $20 bill can buy you stuff. It's called buying power. A soul, your soul in the hands of God can bring increase to the kingdom of God. The devil doesn't want you to be committed. The devil doesn't want you, amen, to give your life to God. But a life in the hands of God, amen, a testimony in the hands of God. See, this morning, you've been found by God. You've been found by the church. I look at the church. I look at Pastor Larry, man. I look at all the things, man, you guys are doing to, you know, get people saved. Maybe some of you here even have not really found your place. But you have to find your place. You have to find your place. Because now you have value. See, a coin never loses its value. But it's useless until it is in the hands of its owner. There's something about a, a soul that is away from God. It loses that beauty. It loses that holiness. And it is tarnished because of sin. But a coin or a soul in the hands of God has the ability and the power to bring increase to God. You know, I don't know any of you, and I've seen some of you guys worshiping. I've seen a couple of brothers out there blowing the parking lot. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm driving in, and I watch this kind of stuff, man. I live for that kind of stuff. I'm watching my brothers, man, you know, red t-shirts, and I'm watching them doing some work. And I says, I says, praise God, you know. Remember before? You were just running the streets, man. Remember before? Now you have purpose. Now you have, amen. You're, you're, see, a soul away from God has no buying power. But a soul in the hands of God can bring increase. Listen. To the kingdom of God. That's you. That's you. Don't hesitate to get in the hands of God. You want to be in the hands of God. Let me ask you a question. How many of you want to be in the hands of the Lord? Let me see your hands. I want my life to be in the hands of God. I want God to use my life. Do you know the thought? The thought that killed me is this. There's nothing that no one can do for me. Before I got saved, this was my thought. There's nothing that no one can do for me. There's, there's nothing that I can do to undo what I've become. About six, seven felonies, possession, all this stuff, high school dropout, 
my mind fried on PCP acid. There's nothing that anyone can do to fix this. Do you know I would read? And I would read and I'd forget the paragraph that I just read. And I would have to go back and I'd read. I'd be over here and I'd forget. I said, I ain't right, man. Because I wanted to memorize my Bible. Do you know now I can read? And I can read books? And when I read something in a book, I can find the book on my, where my books are at, and I know exactly where it's at now. I remember things that I've read so I can teach. It's crazy. But my mind was, there's nothing that no one can do to fix this. But the moment that my life came into the hands of God, God has been able to use my life. And today, I praise the Lord that God is using my life to preach literally throughout the world for Jesus Christ. For the Lord. But if I was the guy in the picture, (laughs) I'd just be out there holding a wall somewhere. But a life in the hands of God. But it's not easy finding souls. It's not easy finding souls. The Bible says that that woman lit a lamp. That's why the church has to get with it, man. That's why the church, man, you got you to get in your word. You got to read your Bible, man. You got you to memorize it. What's crazy with me, I know a lot of Christians know all the stats about their football team, but they don't know any stats in the Bible. They know all the gospel. They have all these hours invested on um, Facebook and what's chat and all that stuff. <laughs> And no hours in the scripture. It's not easy finding coins. But I'm going to tell you something, church. They're out there. They're out there. Amen. That's all I have this morning. Every head bow-